Welcome to the last session. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last but not the least, uh, maybe you had, uh, actually attended last year's keynote and you actually know Boris. Uh, he was also presenting about the topic above cloud. And we also, uh, uh, Seven and I at least we were at, uh, and Tommy also, and uh, Chris at the DSR Gate Technology Target this year in February, March, and was it February? Yeah? February. Yeah. And we were to watching a, a session from uh, Boris where he was designing on a whiteboard the idea behind about cloud, how to use it, what is the, the architecture, the Zill und Zweck. Purpose. Purpose. Yeah. Purpose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, about cloud. It was really impressive because he was doing it live. He was really just designing it, the architecture, explaining it uh, pretty, uh, in a pretty nasty, impressive way. So we actually thought, hey, we're going to invite him again. He is now. Thank you. Uh, Pleasure. Actually, to be part of this keynote again. And uh, the original announcement was actually with Jens Weiler. Unfortunately, he is sick, but we also have now Alexander Rota with us, which uh, also a big, big thank you. It was like, uh, when did you actually sign up for this? Yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> That's short yeah. notice. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought you could see actually it's pretty amazing that people from SAP are actually uh, up to do this uh, kind of keynote stuff on a really short notice because it's not like 24 hours ago that we actually was informed, hey, Congratulations, you are going to be actually on the keynote, you're going to be streamed live. You are facing it on the internet for the rest of your life, on the rest of YouTube. And uh, so that's uh, actually all about uh, the introduction. Now I give you the session from uh, Boris and Alexander, and I hope you really enjoyed what I've seen so far, at least at the DSA Category Tag. It's amazing. So enjoy. Thanks a lot. Um, so the first disclaimer will be, um, it's about ABAP Cloud. I think you heard a lot about ABAP Cloud during the last hours, um, all the details for developers. Um, the keynote was about ABAP Cloud in action. So you have seen all the technical stuff for developers. You have seen the IDE and all that. Um, this session um, will be different. So first of all, it's the last one. Um, you are all tired, that's why um, <laughs> We thought it might be good to have an easy session at the end. So lean back, relax. Um, we will have easy graphics. First of all, the idea really was to um, use a whiteboard or an iPad, but my drawing skills are really limited, especially on the iPad. That's why we more or less now use PowerPoint instead of the stuff we used at the DSAG. Um, so what we do now is, with very simple graphics, um, we try to make it easier to understand what ABAP Cloud is about, why it all you, you, you need it somehow, uh, why can't I stay with classic ABAP, um, what is the role ABAP Cloud plays in S4HANA and in the different S4HANA editions and in extensibility, and why is it so important for the clean call of story, which um, SAP is explaining and again and again. So these are the, the main topics. Um, I think we need roughly 30 minutes or something like that. So there will be enough um, time for any kind of questions. Normally, if you talk about um, about cloud extensibility in clean core, um, I think at, in Mannheim, we had one hour Q&A at the end. So um, let's see how this will evolve today. So we start really, really easy um, to ensure that everybody can keep track more or less. So we speak about SAP as Vana, so the next generation ERP of SAP. First thing you should know is it's running on ABAP. So it's the ABAP platform, which is underneath. Easy. Next step, okay, s hana that's not only one solution, we have several editions. So we have s hana Cloud Public Edition, we have Private Edition, and we have any parameters. Let's start from the right side, s hana the Public Cloud Edition. That's really the standardized public cloud solution, um, which you can, subscribe to as a customer. As said, it's standardized. It's a pure clean core. SAP is taking care of upgrading and updating that solution. Um, and a pure clean core means it's really an automated update. Um, so you're not really involved in that. That's happening to all the tenants and systems during weekend. 
And that's why it's so important that your extensions really rely only on public APIs. So it's a pure clean core without any exceptions. On the other hand, we have the private editions or the private cloud, um, less standardized, um, <clears throat> more compromises. So for example, you can convert from your ERP system, which you have today to S1, a private cloud, bring with you some of your existing classic custom code. Um, you decide more or less when you do your SWANA upgrade, you have still your SWANA upgrade projects, but nevertheless, still you are interested to have better upgrades, less expensive upgrades, less effort. That's why Clean Core is coming in here as well to reduce at least the effort which you have during the upgrades. And then at the end, of course, the last one on the left is we have SAP S4 HANA any premise. So understood, okay, that different edition, that's nice. Now it's uh, mainly about extensibility. So the next uh, step is to understand what all this is about on-stack extensibility and side-by-side -side extensibility. Mm -hmm. So let's start with on-stack extensibility and extensions. That's really easy because that's exactly the stuff which you did during the last decades. Um, you log on to your S4 system and create extensions. You build, you build some custom code, some set classes, you extend perhaps a DDIC table using an append, perhaps you um, implement a body implementation. All this is happening in the s system. So it's really tightly attached directly to the s system. You're using the same HANA database, the same application stack as the actual s applications. If you're in a debugger, you see your extension code on top of the s application. So it's really on stack in the application. On the other hand, we have side-by-side -side extensibility. That means you are not on the Aswana stack, but you are on a completely separated platform. You um, build an application on a separated, physically separate um, platform. And in the SAP world, that's the SAP business technology platform. And um, when you want to access data from the ERP, then of course you call uh, remote APIs to retrieve material data or business partners, update some sales orders and so on. And there are a lot of discussions about on-stack extensions and side-by-side -side extensions. First of all, that's nothing about religious debates. You need both. There are use cases when you use on-stack extensions and there are use cases when you use side-by-side -side extensions. There are use cases which you should not do on stack. There are not all extensions can be done side by side. So keep that in mind, you need both. And it's really an architectural decision or use case decision when you use what. To give you some examples, on stack extensions. If you want to add a field to an UI or to, your applic to an SAP application. So from beginning from the database table up to the UI, then of course you are doing this on stack in the S4 system. We are not replicating all the data to the BTP and then adding somehow the field uh, on BTP. If you want to add a simple um, condition to an S4 HANA process, just adding an if statement with some conditions, some permission con you want to check or something like that, then of course you add these two, three ABAP code lines into a body implementation on stack in the S4 HANA, not side by side. You're not calling remote APIs for that simple task. On the other hand, um, now I'm in the side-by-side -side world, think about um, a new application or solution which addresses totally different um, users like customers or um, suppliers who shall not access your ERP system, of course. They don't even have users there. Therefore, um, a, um, a supplier network or a supplier application, a supplier portal or a shop, of course, runs on a separated platform side by side to the actual ERP. Or think about hub scenarios. You have an application which um, integrates with several ERP systems, with several additional cloud services. Uh, it makes no sense to choose an arbitrary ERP system and put it in the application on top of that S4 system. It's much better than to put this on a dedicated separated platform, um, which is in this case, the SAP Business Technology Platform. And these are only examples to show you it depends on the use case when to choose what. It's not about any religious debates. You need both to choose on stack or side by side, depending on the use case. Yes, and uh, um, so Boris is totally right. And I think there are even scenarios where you need both to exactly. realize one single scenario. 
imagine you have a side by side extension that you want to drive with an uh, with an remote API from the S4 system. And now you detect that the uh, standard API that S4 has delivered is just not sufficient to drive your side by side extension. So you can do an on stack extension, create your own custom API, and use that from your side by side extension. So they really there's really an interplay of all those possibilities. Exactly. And if we um, dig a little bit deeper concerning side by side extensions on the SAP Business Technology Platform, then um, of course, side by side, you have more choices concerning programming languages compared to the S4 HANA on stack extensions. On stack, you use ABAP full stop. Nothing else is available. On PTP, you can choose the programming language, be it ABAP, be it um, Java, be it whatever. That's the first one. A second one is um, we are in the business area. That means you build business applications. And SAP decided to choose two environments um, which are extended step by step to fulfill the main requirements you have normally in the business environment. Meaning, okay, here you get security, compliance, all the reuse service, and they are part of the environment. They are baked in more or less in the programming model so that you can easily use them. You notice already from ABAP, just think about all the um, product requirements, which, which are automatically fulfilled in ABAP, or think about all the reuse services we've always had in ABAP, um, factory calendar, number range, all that stuff. Yes. Yes, I think that's your topic. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> and exactly the same shall be available in the non-ABAP world, and that's exactly what we do with um, the cup extensibility um, extensions. Here you have step-by-step, -step, more or less, the same range of uh, capabilities integrated directly so that you have the same convenience if you build business applications in this environment as well. So two um, stacks optimized for business applications on the BTP. And now, of course, since we have here the ABAP conference, we um, go a little bit deeper in the ABAP world. So we are now on SAP BTP ABAP environment. So the code name is Steampunk. And here we more or less in Yes, that was Melis, the, the first step when we thought about ABAP Cloud. It was 2018 when we introduced Steampunk. Um, here, more or less, we invented ABAP Cloud, and not just because it's so a cool name, um, there was really a must to do this. And why? Um, you must know that our ABAP environment on the BTP is operated by us, by the ABAP team. That means we do the upgrades. We are responsible for that service, for this platform as a service offering on the BTP. That means, for example, we upgraded now um, our ABAP environment, all the customers, all the partners, all the tenants running on Steampunk from the August release to the November release. And we are doing this quarterly. And of course, we are doing this during the weekend um, overnight. And afterwards, all the solutions running on top, of course, shall uh, go on. That's the idea. And that can only work if the extensions are very clearly separated from the actual ABAP platform in this case. That means only public APIs can be used. So you are not allowed to, to, to call any function module which is available there in the ABAP platform. No, we must be very strict here. Otherwise, we can't run these automated updates. And that was the reason why we introduced the ABAP cloud development model. And here we really ensure that only public SAP APIs and extension points can be used. Our cloud optimized ABAP language really um, brings syntax errors when you try to call an arbitrary function module from SAP. Um, additionally, we enforce that you don't access the operating system or the file system. Of course, that doesn't make any sense in a cloud environment. And um, we follow the principle of one concerning all the legacy programming models we collected during the last decades, meaning we now focus on the modern cloud-enabled way, web UIs and so on to build applications. That's the web programming model, which we have seen in the first keynote um, and everything which is in included here with the Fiori uh, tools and so on, plus uh, the development tools in ADT, plus the key user tools. So that's the offering um, to build modern ABAP cloud based um, applications and solutions, which then survive upgrades and which are ready um, for cloud use. So that was the main reason um, why ABAP Cloud has been invented, more or less 2018, to be honest, and that now we mature that step by step. More and more applications are running on Steampunk, partner solutions are running on Steampunk. And then in the year 2022, it was time to reuse this capability 
cloud-ready ABAP development with ABAP Cloud, not only on Steampunk on the right side, but in S4HANA as well. And the first thing was uh, introduce it in S4HANA public cloud. And here, more or less, we have the same situation. Um, it's again a public cloud offering. It's um, upgraded automatically, meaning mm -hmm. we have here, now we stepped over from the February release to the um, August release, all the S4HANA public cloud customers and tenants were upgraded to the new version. And that's happened again, as we had it in Steampunk automatically overnight during the weekend. And again, all the extensions must survive that, of course. In the old days, um, we had only QSA extensibility provided in S4HANA public cloud, but now we added the possibility to really build up a cloud code um, as a developer in S4HANA public cloud with on-stack extensions. We are now in the S4HANA cloud, meaning I really log on to the S4HANA cloud system with my ABAP development tools and can code ABAP, um, but not a classic ABAP, but ABAP cloud. And you see it's more or less the same as we had it in the steampunk world. I can only access the public interfaces again from the other platform, like factory calendar, number range, or others. Um, I can't call uh, the function modules, the old ones, for jobs or whatsoever. And additionally, and that's the other part now, on the left side, you see the, see the blue um, frame there, that's the public interface of S4HANA public cloud. Since we are now on stack, we are running really on the S4HANA. Um, the S4HANA public cloud colleagues provided um, CDS views, web facades, or um, extension points for sales order, procurement, and all the um, different areas which we have so that you can code against these stable APIs, your ABAP cloud extension. So we reused really the ABAP cloud development model is identical to what you do on Steampunk in s public cloud. Um, here you build your own stack extensions on s public cloud using um, the public interfaces from the other platform plus from s public cloud. And this is then combined to the following public cloud extensibility model. So you can build on stack extensions on the left um, in this s public cloud using our cloud directly on the stack using the public interfaces of the other platform or from s from s public cloud or you build applications uh, side by side, be it via CUP or be it via ABAP Cloud with the BTP ABAP environment. Of course, you could use remote calls if you are side by side um, using the public remote interface of S4HANA. This can be a you know, data service as an example um, to connect to S4HANA. So that's then the complete portfolio available to in the public cloud to extend S4HANA public cloud, be it on stack or side by side. Perhaps um, two additional sentences. The first one is about partners. If you are a partner and you provide a solution today, then normally you have an add-on, which is then deployed on S4HANA. If you do this on BTP, you have an additional option. That means you can then provide SaaS solutions on your own, meaning you build an application, for example, on SAP BTP ABAP environment, um, and then use multi-tenancy to provide a pure SaaS solution to your customers. They subscribe to your partner solution. You operate it. You are on a separate infrastructure of everything under your control, and then provide not an add-on, but a real SaaS solution to your customers. Plus, um, using that way, it's easier to provide this solution, this partner solution, since it's side by side, separated from the S4 for several S4HANA editions. So you have then one solution, which may be able to connect not only to S4HANA public cloud, but to private cloud or on-premise as well, using um, different API interfaces. And of course, on the left side, we need more or less something similar. And uh, here the idea is for s public cloud that for partners, if they do on-stack extensions, um, we want to provide the lifecycle management, which you know already from on-premise with add-ons and so on for s public cloud as well, so that we have on both sides convenient possibilities for partners as well. As explained by Alex, and that's my more or less my last sentence, um, especially for partners, the combination of both will be essential. So. Most likely you may choose, for example, that you go for a multi ten solution on BTP and then use an on-stack extension for some tightly coupled enhancement. So perhaps adding some fields to um, SAP standard tables, perhaps adding a body implementation to change the flow, plus perhaps um, creating an own 
remote API and own remote data service, which is tailored for your um, application because of performance, perhaps you collect some more data in one shot for your remote API. And that's why then you have more or less an add-on um, on stack, which you use plus the actual application running on the BTP. So that's really a very rich model, um, which hopefully then um, fulfills all the requests from customers plus partners to extend um, our S4 HANA, be it on stack or side by side. That was now the public cloud model. Now it's the perfect time to um, put this over, get more or less students for the furthest list now to Alex. I think many of these um, nice items can be reused in the private cloud as well. Well, that's actually true, Boris. So uh, we are going to see where we have a reuse, but of course there are also some differences. So we will come to that in a minute. So now for the for the next few minutes, the focus will, will be here on the left hand side on the private cloud edition and uh, any premise. So what we want to reach there in these S4 editions with above cloud is a clean core. Why is that the case? Well, Boris mentioned it at the beginning. In S4 Public Cloud, we have a clean core by default. We have extensibility with ABAP Cloud and on BTP, and by that, we directly ensure that. So we have a clean core there. Uh, no question about that. But here in the private cloud in our premise, this is not guaranteed because we still have the classic ABAP development model around. And so uh, there, this really needs to be tackled. So uh, what do we want to reach? Why do we actually want a clean core there? Well, probably you have some experience from ECC upgrades, right? Uh, in ECC systems, you have many custom extensions. And if you have an upgrade project there, then you know it just takes some time, right? So it's really a huge effort to uh, perform the upgrade, perform all the tests afterwards, maybe uh, do some code adaptions and so on. So this is really hard. So now going forward to the cloud, of course, we want that you can do those upgrades much more frequently. Why? Well, uh, of course, we deliver innovations always with the newest release. And so to make you consume those innovations, of course, you must upgrade, right? And uh, we want you to upgrade more frequently and make that much easier. And this is, of course, given if you reach a clean core with clean core extensibility. So this is our main objective there in the private cloud. And now we come to the reuse that Boris mentioned before. Uh, well, can we learn anything from public cloud? Well, of course we can learn something. What can we do to reach a clean core? Well, we just do everything exactly as in the public cloud, because there we know if you follow the public cloud extensibility model, we reach a clean core. Okay, so this is basically our first attempt. We use the reuse the public cloud extensibility model. We use ABAP cloud. We use BTP for any custom development. Is that everything? Is it exactly that? No. So it's nearly that, but there are two major differences. So the first difference is coming to the public interfaces here on the, on the upper left, so this blue box. So if we zoom in there, then in the private cloud, this is a bit different than in the public cloud. So here on the right-hand side, you can see that in the private cloud, in addition to the ABAP cloud APIs, so these are the APIs that are released under the C1 contract, in addition to those APIs, we also have some classic APIs around that are uh, intended for the usage so that you can build wrappers around those classic APIs and enable your wrappers for um, ABAP Cloud. So you have an example for this classic API? Well, a classic API that is, uh, let's say, desire, um, uh, designated for that would be a read text function module, right? So subscript from the reuse service area, that's uh, one famous example. Uh, you will have many subscript texts in your systems. They are translated. They are used everywhere in your classic extensions. And you don't want to bring all those texts into a new persistency, a new service, and so on. You just want to reuse those for an ABAP Cloud extension. Then you can wrap the function module, read text, and use that in your ABAP Cloud extension. And the nice thing, it's, it's uh, an API which we don't change anyhow. Yeah, of, it's course, of course, we don't change it, right? Because we know that you frequently use those function modules that are really serving also as an API. So these are really classic APIs. They are kept stable as well. So when I use these APIs, I still have no issue doing my upgrade. Hopefully. Exactly, okay. exactly. So that's the idea. And this is exactly private cloud specific because developing those wrappers, this cannot be done in ABAP Cloud because uh, Boris told you that in ABAP Cloud, you will directly get a syntax error if you try to use the retext function module, for example. So you cannot do it there. 
This can only be done in standard ABAP, in classic ABAP code, and this is only possible in the private cloud. So why do we do that there? Well, the reason is very clear because the scope of the private cloud is so broad that of course we do not have uh, C1 released APIs ready for all the business scopes, all the business areas and so on. And so to get you going and, and to let you enable the stuff that you need, of course, we have those classic APIs also around and you can help yourself and enable those. And so this really drives your ABAP cloud extensions there in the private cloud. Okay, so this was the first difference. And now comes the second difference. And this is about classic ABAP extensions. So imagine you come from ECC and you already have several um, tons probably of custom objects, classic custom objects, uh, classic extensions. What can you do about those? In the public cloud, you cannot use them because classic ex extensions just don't exist in the public cloud. But here now in the private cloud, we have the possibility for a brownfield. That means coming from ECC, converting towards S4 cloud private edition, you have the possibility to take over your extensions. Of course, what we recommend is always first fit to standard, remove all the extensions that you don't need anymore or that are covered by the S4 scope already meanwhile, right? So this is of course recommended and things like intelligent custom code management of course should also be done uh, so that you only take the most important and central uh, extensions from the classic world also to the private, uh, private cloud. But this is possible here, and that's important because uh, you can then, in the private cloud, stepwise transform your classic extensions towards ABAP cloud and towards the public cloud extensibility model. So these are basically the, the three pillars that we have. First, reuse as much as possible from the public cloud. Then we have- Especially for new extensions. Ex exactly. Of yeah. course, that's the default for everything newly developed. Yeah then we have uh, the classic APIs that you can use in addition. And if required, you can even bring classic extensions. And this then makes up our three tier extensibility model for S4 private cloud. Probably you have seen that picture several times already and you have uh, read many documentations and blogs about that. So I will not go into detail to all those blogs here, but um, just to guide you, uh, tier one, that's basically the first point, reuse the public cloud extensibility model. Tier two, this is basically use in addition to the released APIs, also the classic APIs that because are- Because the scope is so broad. Exactly, and... exactly. Enable the, those APIs yourself. And tier three, this is if you come with converted classic extensions. And I think with that, we have our last summary slide. So ABAP Cloud, is now really our new ABAP development model that is uh, um, uh, available everywhere, available everywhere, sorry. Uh, both on the left-hand side in any S4 edition, you can do ABAP Cloud and you shall do ABAP Cloud. And also on the right-hand side on BTP, of course, you can use ABAP Cloud. So ABAP Cloud is really the future. This is the way to go. Yes. And with that, Boris, I don't know, do you want to add some more words otherwise? Yeah, I think um, perhaps some closing words before we go to Q and A. Um, so perhaps what you have seen now is um, the importance of ABAP Cloud and how important it is that you learn it. Especially, I ask the ABAP developers to transform from the classic ABAP development model to ABAP Cloud. Now is the time to do this um, because you see on that slide it's now everywhere. You can use it everywhere, and it's the default for um, all your new extensions. Yes. Um, we have seen, um, we really invested a lot of time to find a pragmatic approach that it is usable not only in the public cloud world, but in S4HANA private cloud on premise as well, in introducing the possibility to use stable APIs, which we had for decades. Let's be honest about that. And um, with the wrapper concept to include those in the above cloud world as well. And additionally, um, concerning the um, existing custom code, which you convert to your S4 system, um, we all know um, that that happens, that many customers start in S4 and a private cloud with thousands or 10,000 of custom code objects. And um, it's clear that you can't clean up this during weeks, but this will be a step-by-step -step approach. Um, and of course, you always uh, must think about business case. I want to renovate anyhow this application because I want to have a few UI, I want to have a mobile, I have a mobile use case for that. And if I anyhow renovate it, then I do the step towards the more upgrade stable up cloud, up cloud extensions. 
or you see that your extension makes trouble during your upgrades, then it's um, an indication that it's worthwhile to invest. So it's step by step reducing your more or less burden which you have with the existing classic custom code. Nobody thinks that you can do this um, in one big shot, getting rid of your classic custom code. But I think with that approach, we have now a pragmatic way that you can use ABAP Cloud and step by step get to a cleaner core um, depending on your starting position, be it a greenfield or be it a converted system. And with that, we are ready for your questions. Questions, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> not a wish list. Oh, it's almost Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, one very important. So I'm standing out of the picture, but I'm my, uh, my voice is coming out of the off. <laughs> uh, you said the function module read text is not available. What's the future of the complete long text handling? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we will have uh, other technologies. Uh, for example, if you want to have a long text in a business object, right? So we have a reuse component that is called Notes for application component uh, application objects. This is this is currently wrap enabled and Fiori enabled, and this will be the future if you want to have long text in your business applications, for example. For other uh, usages like uh, documentation of workbench objects, things like that, we have the knowledge transfer document in place. And um, so basically use case driven, we have future technologies uh, for that. But of course, in the meantime, for compatibility, we know that you still need to use subscript. Oh. <laughs> um, one question, uh, I think it's not completely clear for everybody out there. Um, ABAP Cloud can be used, should be used, but you don't have to use it on on-prem system. So you, even without using ABAP Cloud, if you're doing the old style, you can still upgrade to S4HANA 2025. Yes, absolutely. So perhaps I start, then you um, add um, in S4HANA public cloud and on SAP BTP ABAP environment, ABAP Cloud is a must in the public cloud. In private cloud and on premise, you can use both. You can use classic ABAP and you can use um, ABAP cloud. We recommend to use ABAP cloud for all the new extensions. Of course, you can do upgrades uh, with classic ABAP extensions as well. Um, we just want to reduce the effort for the upgrades. That's the main um, idea behind um, ABAP cloud. So um, we need Classic ABAP in s on a private cloud and on premise as well. First of all, because you have still classic ABAP code in your system. You collected this during the last decades. And um, second, there may be use cases where you extend uh, Dunpo based application of SAP where you need classic ABAP as well. So both interact. Hopefully, we step by step reduce the amount of classic ABAP. That's more the idea. Yeah. Pragmatic approach is really important in the area of on-premise and the private edition. Yeah, that's uh, uh, often uh, here at customer side. I'm working in uh, module X, Y, Z, and there is no SAP content delivered for now. Mm -hmm. So they still do the new development for new objects, even also in the classical old GUI world. Yep. So, so definitely uh, the go-to solution would be use ABAP Cloud wherever possible, that's for sure. But in case you need to use the standard ABAP, the classic ABAP development model, then uh, we have one further tool at hand that can help you to make sure that you do not violate um, too many things. And this is the ATC. So we- um, That's the ABAP test code for that thing. Yeah, exactly. Then. <laughs> <laughs> and Thomas Fiedler is actually sits, uh, sitting here in the room. No, no, no it's just- just kidding. <laughs> so, so basically in ABAP Cloud, there we have really the, the ABAP Cloud rules in a strict sense. So if you if you violate them there, you get syntax errors, or for example, in dynamic programming, you get runtime errors. So we really make sure in a strict sense that you do not violate the cloud rules. And if you cannot use ABAP Cloud, so the new language version, but you have to use standard ABAP, then you can, you can use the ATC to still enforce the ABAP Cloud rules, but let's say in a soft manner. You will get ATC errors, and then you can decide, aha, okay, this can be exempted, the other one cannot be exempted and needs to be corrected. So that's the idea. All right. Uh, there's 
uh, in the comments on, on YouTube, we still have the classical old discussion, side by side scenario, rub or cup. <laughs> Boris, do you want to add that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think it's easier to explain um, when you use on stack and side by side versus cup or um, ABAP cloud. I think there are many different uh, more or less points of this or dimensions to consider. To be honest, very often it really depends on the, on the development team. If there's, these are ABAP developers, it's more likely that they go for ABAP. If they are Java developers, it's less likely to be brutally honest. So very often it's more the um, available staff or the available developers concerning decisions. And additionally, it depends on the use case. Um, I think in the area of you build a, a business application, a bigger business application, I think ABAP has proven its strength. There's no doubt about that. And there are other areas where of course the, the Java and Node environment is much better. Therefore, um, I think it really depends on the use case. But in many cases, um, not only the use case, but um, the developers you have at hand and so on can be a decision criteria as well. But shouldn't be a religious, religious discussion. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, one point I um, not often hear, but I just just came into mind is uh, where what the scenario you have an old system on premise you want to upgrade to S4 or to uh, another modern system sometime. Um, and for the moment, you want to uh, develop a cloud-ready application because it needs to be in the cloud for some reason. Then it's also the possibility to think about to use the steampunk, the classical steampunk, uh, with the idea uh, with the idea that it, in future it can move to the S4 HANA system theoretically. Well, it depends, right? So um, you need to know that uh, if you are on steampunk on BTP. You do not have the local APIs of the entire S4 stack there, but only the platform APIs. So if the extension is an extension that uses platform APIs, and maybe you just develop a custom app with custom data model and so on, this of course can be done side by side on BTP as well. And um, so uh, Boris just switched to the other slide. So yeah, there you can see uh, that if you do it on BTP, then if you want to communicate with the S4 applications, you have to use remote APIs. And so of course you can check whether this fits then, um, yeah. But of course, make sure that you do not uh, try to develop something side by side, which should be on stack, right? So it always depends on the use case. Exactly. Um, and additionally, uh, sometimes you get the question, it's somehow odd to have up up cloud development on on-premise. And that's exactly the reason we wanted to provide up up cloud, the development environment in on-premise as well, in order to, ens to ensure that in this on-premise or in the private cloud, you can use the same development model in this in the system as you do it in the public cloud. So um, from my point of view, of course, depending on your development or on the release you are on, um, there's no direct need then to switch to the BTP because you can do this up up cloud development in S4HANA as well. Of course, the benefit of uh, Steampunk is it's always on the newest release. It's decoupled from the S4 HANA system. It's automatically upgraded. You have always the new release. That's the big advantage which you have. And you, and you don't have to care about the upgrades. That's done automatically by SAP. That's nice as well. Um, that's the big advantage. That's why um, many customers use a BTP ABAP environment just because of that, because you have always the newest version in concerning new features in HANA, new features in ABAP. So it's your innovation platform, more or less. That's more a reason to choose than um, the SAP BTP ABAP environment. Okay. Um, one other question. Uh, how is the, uh, the process and the response time from SAP uh, if I... I have the plan to go to uh, s hana Cloud and I need a Barbie. This Barbie is the only way I have to do, uh, I can create my maintenance order or something like this. And I need to, uh, I need to have this Barbie um, whitelisted or cloud ready um, to go to migrate to the s hana Cloud. Uh, how is the, the process for a customer and the possible response time? Mm -hmm. So perhaps I start, um, first of all, I think it's just, if you speak about the public APIs, uh, we discussed, so we have about cloud-ready APIs, so new CDS views, new um, web facades, of course, those APIs take a long, longer time, you have to develop those, you have to release those. Additionally, not all the different areas which we have in the 
broad scope of the private cloud are in scope concerning those APIs. Therefore, this will take longer and depends really in which um, more or less area you want to have this API. But that's why more or less we had, I think it was point number two, that we have mm -hmm. this extended scope of APIs in the private cloud and premise where we more or less nominate existing classic APIs like a BAPI, like a special function module, which is used by customers, by all the customers more or less, which we, which SAP will not change because this incompatible change would disrupt more or less um, the existing customers. So more or less SAP nominates those um, classic APIs as they, these are our nominate APIs, they are stable and they extend the scope which we have concerning the new modern ABAP cloud APIs. And that's of course, if it, uh, if there are areas where the nomination is missing, this can be done much more quickly compared to building complete new web facades yeah. or complete new CDS view. That's we need. That's why we need both. We must be quick um, and ensure that no extensibility project is blocked, or in special areas of the S4HANA stack, um, there will be no APIs because it's perhaps the compatibility scope or something like that, and in the core scope. Um, more and more of these APIs uh, for the ABAP cloud um, compatibility will be provided, but um, we have both. And that makes it easier for extensibility projects to be not be blocked. That's really essential. Maybe just one small addition regarding the process. So um, of course, if you find that an API is missing for your extensibility project, then let us know why are the customer influence channels? Because this is really the input channel that we have to see, okay, where are APIs missing? And this is basically how we want to react on that. So we want to see, all right, there's an extension project. We understand the use case, why you need it actually. Maybe we even have a successor and we can guide you to the successor. Or we see, all right, there is a gap, we need something, and then we can follow up with a nomination or with the development of an API. And we really want to do that request driven. So this is really a recommendation, use the customer influence channels to request those APIs. My personal experience is uh, I normally start an OSS node or OSS ticket. Um, then I have a three to weeks to uh, three months, a lot of fun with the first level support, <laughs> trying to explain what I need. And um, sure, that's so not the best way to reach the goal. I understand. Uh, but uh, please try to use the the influencing tool. So this is a, this is not the standard support ticket way, but it's uh, this is really an influencing tool. And there, um, we try to make sure that the response time is a bit quicker than uh, a few <laughs> weeks. Uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> oh, let just let me now uh, high check uh, this this talk actually and say uh, um, for once. Of course, if you actually have anything that you actually want to influence the product roadmap of SAP, there is a customer influence website. You can exit it, it is safe. Your permanent data is secure there. <laughs> <laughs> you can open up uh, tickets, no, it's not tickets, ideas. Actually. Ideas, exactly. And uh, normally, if uh, 10 companies are on uh, board for your idea, SAP is going to look into it, and at least you get a statement if it makes sense or not. Yep. It doesn't actually mean that it's going to be implemented, but maybe it keeps also people thinking at SAP what actually customers are using it. So even sometimes if it's, it's rejected, normally it, it gives people simple thinking. So it's always a good idea actually to also influence it. Um, yeah, absolutely. The customer influence side, that's better than go on a, uh, on a, on a uh, some playing with, with your key account uh, executive and all say you're not doing anything. And also, um, we are preparing now for the uh, meet the speaker, but I'm not sure if Olga actually uh, is coming back. But at least it will be very nice actually to, to make a little bit of a, a thinking exercise. Uh, let's go to the future, 12 years from now. We have the year 2035. I mean, today, as we said, uh, ABAP Cloud is still actually optional. But I guess uh, when you're thinking about the end of uh, S4 support in the 2040, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, I guess it's interesting for us. The upper cloud coming model. It's a little bit easier actually to go to the next two needs, whatever it may be, than it is actually today. Because to be honest, SAP announced S4 
2014, actually, with the 2015 release was the first one. And since then, actually, nine years, 10 years ago, customers are struggling with actually going to S4 because of the legacy code base. So uh, everybody's thinking, so I, I, I think the next time actually when we are going to the next big release from S4 and we are actually more on the uh, steampunk web, uh, our cloud development track actually, that is going to be easier once for the customer also from the SAP side. Absolutely, that's the idea. Um, um, not the complete time frame, to be honest. I'm, yeah. I, I will not predict what will happen in 2040, to be honest. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. NASDAQ is open, so you <laughs> But um, I think uh, more and more um, this clean core story gets more beef, meaning you know, now we find we found more or less a way how the existing customer base with existing custom code, and that will not go away easily, um, with the API coverage, which we have, I mean, all that um, is just a reality on customer side. And I think with the three peer model, this ABAP cloud, with the BTP, this the compromise we do concerning APIs, um, that we accept custom code, of course, uh, which is already in the system, that we migrate or transform the step-by-step. I think we have now a way which we can use to step-by-step -step get the customers to a cleaner core. Okay. And what we do next is step-by-step um, -step define on a more detailed level, for example, which of our test cockpit variant shall be used in which tier, what are the programming guidelines if you are in such a system, so that the guardrails get clearer and clearer for our developers in the system. And that's uh, the next step, which is uh, more or less on the plate. And uh, in that regard also, um, this year we had a, a whole track or channel actually focus on the RESTful application programming model, channel one. And I hope that everybody actually understood also uh, why it's still optional, so you do not have to write all your coding in, in WAP and so on. SAP at least is all in. Uh, this is the programming model of the future. This is what SAP is also going to base your future development on. So it is here to stay. It's not actually optional for you guys. <laughs> That's the mainstream. Let's say it like that. Uh, that's the main investment topic which we have in the ABAP platform to more and more shape the ABAP cloud development model, including tools, including the programming model, including the review servers to integrate them nicely in the programming model, including the APIs which are missing and which we add step by step. So that step by step, more and more use cases can be covered with yeah. the pure ABAP cloud development model. But um, you know, perhaps you remember how long it took to have the ABAP development model, the classic ABAP development model that was not done in years. So adding controls and adding all the other items. So that's a journey as we had it with the classic yep. ABAP as well. Absolutely. So let's hope that for 2035, we still have an ABAP call. <laughs> 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 I'm sure if we have to to keep it up. We get older and older. I know that in the year 2035, we are not talking any longer about why should I use it, but actually that it's really about how do I test my graph objects. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay, I have test doubles or something like that. Well, <laughs> exactly. So Good. that is uh, mid, mid the speaker.